Hello and welcome, my name is Tristan, and this is a series where I will be taking you through every minor league baseball stadium, rating them, and giving you a prospect breakdown of the best prospect in the game that I go to. In today's episode, I'm at the Greensboro Grasshoppers Stadium in Greensboro, North Carolina. Today, the Greensboro Grasshoppers were playing the Aberdeen Ironbirds, and I will be breaking down the prospect Jackson Holiday. But before I get into that, I'm going to be rating the outside of the stadium and the parking for the stadium. First National Bank Field is very accessible, and there is also a lot of parking. So for the rating, I'm going to give it a 9.5 out of 10. So the outside of the field is very nice and clean. There are nice metal gates before you enter the stadium. There is also a mural on the side of the wall that I thought was a very nice touch for the field. The tunnel that we are about to walk down now is basically following the first base line in the right field. This is the mural that I was talking about earlier. I thought there was a nice touch to the field. As you walk down the tunnel, you can see nice views of downtown Greensboro. I also liked how parking was right across the street from the stadium. Some stadiums, it can be a little bit further away. So the distance to walk to the stadium was very short. As you get towards the end of the tunnel, there is a statue of the Greensboro Grasshoppers mascot and a spot where you can take pictures with them. I thought that this was an interesting touch that you don't really see at very many stadiums. These are the rules for First National Bank Field. They're similar to other fields, so I didn't see a problem with them. For the outside of the field, I will give it a 8.5 out of 10. This is the team store. I liked it because it was very big. There was plenty of space to move around. What I didn't like is the selection of novelties. There wasn't that many. We are now heading around home plate towards the left field concourse. I like this concourse because there were food spots in left field, home plate, and right field. That meant that none of them got really backed up and it was easy to get through the lines. The food options at First National Bank Field were hot dogs, specialty hot dogs, burgers, fries, chicken tenders, Barbecue nachos, chicken barbecue nachos. They also had plenty of alcohol selections, including draft beer, canned beer, wine, and many others. For a food rating, I'm going to have to give First National Bank Field a 7 out of 10. In terms of the actual field, I thought that it was very nice looking. I liked the apartments in the background. For the measurements to the wall, left field was 315 feet, right field was 335 feet, and center field was 400 feet. In today's video, I will be showing you three different seating views. This view right next to the way dugout, behind home plate, and further up in right field. In terms of the field and the view from the seats, I would have to give it a 9 out of 10. This is Jackson Holiday's first at bat. This year for the Ironbirds, he has been a 314 with an on base percentage of 452 and a slugging percentage of 488. He is also MLB.com's number one ranked prospect for the year 2023. It did seem like this game, though, he did have a hard time tracking the off-speed pitch. As you'll see, he'll end up striking out here to a slider down and in. Holiday this year, though, has 65 hits, 11 of those being doubles, 5 of those being triples, with 5 home runs. Holiday also has 35 RBIs, 50 walks, 54 strikeouts, and 17 stolen bases for the season. 
One thing that I do have to commend Holiday on is his eye for the pitch. If it's a ball, chances are he's not swinging. And if it's a strike, chances are it's a hit. As you can see, this is Jackson Holiday's second at bat. And you can see the eye for the pitch. The Greensboro Grasshoppers pitcher was very wary and scared that the Ironbirds were going to be stealing. So he did a lot of pickoffs. He also couldn't really locate his pitches. So as you will see here in a second, Jackson Holiday gets a fastball right over the middle on a 3-0 count and takes it to the left field wall for a double. One thing that I think is very underrated in Holiday's game is his speed on the base pads. But back to the stadium ratings. This was a Thursday night game, so I didn't really expect there to be much in attendance. But the people that were in attendance did seem to be having a great time and were very involved in the game. So for the atmosphere of the stadium rating, I'll give it a 8 out of 10. This is Jackson Holiday's third at bat. It's the same pitcher that was in before. He's still having a hard time locating his pitches. The manager had been out to the mound now twice. The pitcher is still worried about the runner more than he is the batter. I understand not wanting the other team to steal, but when you have a hard time locating your pitches as is, I just feel it leaves you vulnerable to leave a pitch over the plate like he is about to. As you are about to see, the pitcher leaves a breaking ball right over the middle. Jackson Holiday thought it was gone. I thought it was gone. The whole stadium thought it was gone. But it ends up being caught by the center fielder right at the wall. It's kind of crazy the amount of power that he creates in his swing. For only being 6 foot and 185, the way that he moves his hands and pops his hips through his swing is something that's unteachable. One thing that helps him generate that power is his high leg kick. As you can see there, he has a very high leg kick which allows his swing transition to move more fluid for his small frame. This is the second pitcher Holiday's facing for this game. This guy had a very nice fastball from 95 to 99 miles per hour. He also had good off-speed pitches, but he struggled with the same thing that the first pitcher struggled with, and that was locating them. As you can see, if it's not in the strike zone, Holiday's not swinging. This is something that all the pitchers this game struggle with, was locating pitches. So, here in a second, Jackson Holiday will get his first walk of the game. Back to the ratings of the stadiums while we see Holiday go to first. The entertainment between the innings was kind of lackluster. They didn't really have that much to offer. And the mascot as well was kind of lackluster because you didn't really see him. One thing I did think was nice though was during the seventh inning stretch it seemed like everybody took part in singing take me out to the ball game and getting up stretching around. So for entertainment I'll give it 8 out of 10. This is Holiday's final at bat for the game. Overall I think he had a very solid game even though he struck out for the first at bat. He does a very good job here to get his barrel on the ball. Even though that he gets over it just a little bit, due to his elite speed, he's able to get to first before a throw is even made. Holiday finished the game with five plate appearances, four at-bats, two runs, two hits, one double, one RBI, and one walk, and one strikeout. In terms of the rating for First National Bank Park, it's an 8 out of 10 altogether. 
Anyway, guys, that's all for this one. If you have any suggestions on what stadium I should go to next or what prospect I should follow next, please leave them down in the comments below. Again, my name is Tristan. I'm the Stadium Tourist, and I will see you guys next time.